Awesome. Welcome, everyone. It's good to see you all again for another season of Wildlife Safari with Macomb Science Olympiad. Um, today for our event co-training, we'll do a brief overview of the rules um, of this event and the scope and answer any questions that you might have that don't get answered um, in our information today. My name is Melanie. I am the um, event supervisor for the Wildlife Safari event. This is my third year um, as event supervisor um, in elementary school. I also participated in Science Olympiad um, and Wildlife Safari was my favorite event. So first of all, thank you all for spending your time um, to coach these students um, and give them an awesome experience in Wildlife Safari and Science Olympiad. Um, I know that Wildlife Safari and Science Olympiad both played a role in what I chose to go on to study in school as well as um, my career. Um, I'm an education specialist at the Detroit Zoo, um, the Detroit Zoological Society. So it definitely played um, an important role in shaping what I wanted to do with my career. So for Wildlife Safari 2024, um, as you may or may not know, Wildlife Safari is a really cool event that rotates different um, animal groups throughout the years. Um, so last year was mammals, the year before birds, the year before that fish. This year is reptiles and amphibians. So um, the scope of this year, students will be tested on their knowledge of Great Lakes herpetofauna and their habitats through the use of the field guide, along with their understanding of basic ecological concepts such as food chains, food webs, habitat information, and the impact of humans on the ecology of Michigan and the Great Lakes region. Um, once again, we're using a field guide um, written by Stan Tequila. Um, this is a really cool student child friendly field guide. Um, I loved using these as a kid. Um, so this here is the field guide that um, our test will be based on and the information will be taken from. Um, notice that this one this year is not a Michigan specific one. Um, reptiles and amphibians, there are quite a, quite a few less than mammals or birds. Um, so this field guide encompasses um, a Great Lakes region and incorporates some species from Minnesota and Wisconsin as well. As for the rules, um, one of your main things is going to be to tag onto the Science Olympiad event page. Um, so on that um, MacombSO.org website under elementary, you'll toggle to events up at the top. Over on the left hand side, we'll list all of the different um, events and scroll down to Wildlife Safari and it'll take you to this events um, web page here. This is where the home base for um, lots of good information is. It'll have a um, attachment of the event rules that we'll go over in a little bit more detail today, but always, always, always refer back to that. Um, it's got the list of um, frog calls for you to download and study with students, and there will also be a recording of today's training as well to refer back to. Um, that rule page is something that you want to refer back to as a coach multiple times throughout the season just to make sure that you are on track. Um, and making sure that you're encompassing all the information to study with your teams. We'll walk through each portion of this today, but it goes over um, the scope of the competition, the question types, um, how the tournament is set up in our session, as well as touching on scoring, and then um, the resource if you haven't already gotten field guides, as well as information on those frog and toad calls. In addition to the information toward the bottom of that web page um, for Wildlife Safari is a um, FAQ section, a Frequently Asked Questions section. If a question isn't answered here today or already on this page, um, you can submit a question through a form at the bottom of that page, and that will go to the tournament director and then myself, who will provide an answer. Um, and then typically those questions get reposted up on the website here for everyone else to see as well. Um, so make sure you take a look through those questions. Just to highlight, there is one question that has changed compared to previous years. Um, is there a size limit on the student created field guides? And we'll touch on those in a little bit here. Um, but this year that has been changed um, just due to the spacing in some of the rooms that we have used for um, our sessions. Stations are typically pretty close together and teams are right up next to each other. Um, so I found that 
the larger size binders that hold probably about like legal size paper are just a bit too um, outside of the space of that of your team's space. So rather than encroaching on the neighboring team's space, I just wanted to limit a little bit. So you're limited to a standard size binder um, size uh, for student field guides. All right, as for the tournament test format. So as I said, all questions are going to be based on information that's found in or derived from in the reptiles and amphibians field guide by Stan Tequila. Our sessions, like others, are 30 minutes long. Um, everyone will begin with frog and toad calls. So this year is a bit similar to the birds year, um, where we will first, once students are set and teams are set at their beginning stations, rather than starting to rotate through stations, we will um, play out loud a set of the frog and toad calls based on the selections of recordings that are posted on the website and sent out to all of you. Um, this is going to be a continuous um, recording that's played aloud for all teams at once. So those vocalization audio clips are going to be about 15 seconds or so each, and then there'll be five seconds of silence to allow students to to answer on their forms before the next call plays. So call one, it'll say call one. It'll make the frog or toad vocalization. Students take a look at their question, answer that question, and then call two. It'll go right into the next one. Once those are all done, um, we'll move into the station-based portion of the test. So there will be about 18 to 20 stations that teams will rotate through. Teams have one minute at every station and to answer about three to five questions. Um, they have that 60 seconds to stay at that station. And then once that 60 seconds is up, we will call out rotate and they'll move forward to the next station. Students won't be able to return back to any station or go forward before they're instructed to on the call outs. As for the questions, um, the questions are multiple choice or true or false. Uh, we use a uh, custom zip grade form, like a Scantron form, where students will bubble in um, the letter of the correct answer. And the stations might include photographs or biofacts, which um, are either real or replica pieces from animals. This could be bone replicas like skeletons. This might be skins, shells, um, et cetera. And students are not allowed to touch any of the biofacts um, just to uh, their delicacy during the competition, um, unless they are noted and it's said, okay, you are okay to touch this one um, by the event supervisor. If we find that students have um, touched or um, damaged a piece of the biofacts, they might be um, disqualified or result in a point deduction. Um, we want to make sure that these elements are the same for all the teams as they rotate through the station, so um, that's why. And then scientific names are going to be included in uh, the tests this year, and it might be included in up to 20% of the test questions. As for scoring, points are awarded for correct answers, um, and they're worth anywhere between one and four points um, based on the difficulty of that question. In the event that we have a tied score, which sometimes happens, um, our first tiebreaker is based on the number of frog and toad vocalizations that were answered correctly. And then if a second tiebreaker is needed, we'll then move to um, based on how many four point questions were answered correctly. So how many of the most difficult questions were answered correctly? What should students bring? Um, so student teams are responsible for bringing their own pens and pencils. I definitely recommend a backup or two, um, especially if they're using a pencil. Um, does not matter if it's pen, pencil, no, doesn't have to be number two pencil for the zip grade forms. Um, the system recognizes whatever is bubbled in there. Um, and then students can bring up to two field guides per team. So only one field guide per student. Um, so yeah, if you have a single student team representing your school, um, they are just allowed one field guide. Um, but if you have the, the partners, they can bring their own field guides. 
Um, and these can either be um, what I would recommend, the reptiles and amphibians field guide, the tequila field guide um, that we're basing the test on, um, or they have the option to create their own field guide. Um, these can be um, a mix and match of different information from other field guides, um, but do remember that the information is based on what is given in the Stan Tequila field guide. Um, as for student created field guides, um, I've seen students use them, it put things into journals, um, into binders, um, into different notebooks. Um, really the only things are that the pages must be contained. They can't be loose things. They can't pull out loose pieces of paper with information on them um, or cards. Um, it has to be together um, and it needs to be within the size of a standard size binder or notebook. And then as students enter the room, we check the field guides just to make sure there aren't any of those loose materials coming out. Um, so we'll check them as we enter them into the room and set them at a station. Um, no other materials aside from those pens, pencils, and their field guides are allowed. Um, so this does include clipboards. Um, don't, inc don't allow clipboards and then don't allow um, any other bags. So if your students come with that, make sure that there's an adult there to pass it off to before they enter into our room for the session. What should the students know? Um, so definitely practice with identification by photo, um, by unique features of the different species, um, thinking about biofacts with context clues. And what I mean by that is if I have, say, a turtle shell, um, it won't be just based on simply looking at that shell, but it will have some context clues in the question based on information from the field guide. Um, familiarity with the field guide is super, super important for um, our um, event here. Um, you really learning how to find that information quickly just based on a picture or some information is what we base um, this event on. So knowing where within the field guide that information is quickly being able to pull up. Oh, I know that this is uh, this one, this turtle or this turtle and finding that um, space in your field guides, whether it be the Stan Tequila field guide or the student created field guide um, quickly is important for the test. Um, as well as the intro introduction information um, in the beginning of the field guide. It's got a lot of really awesome basic anatomy, basic information on reptiles and amphibians, um, and that information will be included in the test as well. Um, again, up toward the front of the book, um, there are a couple pages on a basic anatomy. It's got different features of um, the different species that are in this field guide. Um, so we will be using those. And then there are some charts that list uh, frog and toad calling seasons. Um, when during the year you hear those frogs and toads calling, um, it does list out for Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. That one, we will focus a little bit more on the Michigan species. And then the general information that's in those field guides. So for each species, it's got a list of different characteristics. There's a ton of information on there. Um, being able to filter through that and see, um, you know, having an idea of where they're located, their anatomy or features, their breeding, um, key characteristics, their habitats, their activity, their behavior, comparison to other species, how to differentiate them from a similar looking species, um, and then their diet and role in a food chain. Um, so these couple of pictures here are those anatomy pictures. These are just basic features of different turtles, snakes, lizards, salamanders, frogs, and toads. Um, so these are all awesome vocab words um, that will be utilized throughout the test. Um, so students should definitely know these. Some other tips for you all um, as event coaches, um, become familiar with the field guide with your students and um, use it in the best way for each student. So everybody learns differently. Um, you know, spend uh, a couple sessions on just a couple species, spend some sessions on flipping through and learning the basics of the field guide and how to navigate through it. 
Um, make it fun, right? The students want to learn this information. Um, they don't just want to study and read the whole time. Um, come up with different um, mock questions for your students and practice through those. Um, make it into games. Um, definitely utilize your resources and opportunities. There are a list of workshops um, that are offered through um, here in Clinton Metro Parks, as well as um, Shadbush, Burgess Shadbush Nature Center that we'll touch on here. Um, these might not necessarily be fully within the scope of the competition because I am not participating or writing those programs, um, but those facilitators are knowledgeable about what to expect um, during our sessions here and provide an awesome opportunity to practice with questions and with the field guide. Um, they've also got a number of resources that we can share, um, looking up different um, photos to help your students work on identification skills is an awesome way to utilize those resources. And then other local nature centers um, just to, for exposure um, to some of these different species as well. Um, and I would definitely recommend practicing with the zip grade forms. That's something that a number of students come in, especially to the practice sessions, not having a good idea that they are bubbling in answers on a zip grade form. Um, so that fo example form is um, linked on our event webpage for Wildlife Safari. Um, so I would definitely recommend practicing with that. If you come up with some mock questions um, and down the line, start practicing with timed stations. Um, this is definitely a good way to utilize that resource so they are more familiar with it during the competition. As for the workshops, um, there's a list of these on the event web page as well. Um, are, these are all workshops for specifically wildlife safari, um, so Stony Creek Metro Park, Lake St. Clair Metro Park, and Burgess Shadbush Nature Center um, all offer a couple different dates and times that you and your teams um, can participate in um, some hands-on experience, trial, some trial uh, question stations. Um, so a really great opportunity to get um, your students involved in that. Um, a couple other resources. Um, these are just some that I would recommend using, especially for looking at identification photos to get some more practice in. Um, again, these websites aren't necessarily within the scope of the competition. I'm not pulling information from these websites for the test questions. Um, but again, a lot is helpful to look at other pictures um, in addition to those that are in the field guide. So Michigan DNR has some awesome um, references on there. Um, iNaturalist and Michigan Herp Atlas are both citizen science projects. So these are um, projects that can actually be um, added to just with photos and observations um, by anyone. And um, really cool to see um, some different identification photos and look on the map as to where some of these um, reptiles or amphibians were found in our area. And that is all I have for all of you. Um, again, any clear questions that clarify um, the tournament, the rules, the scope of Wildlife Safari um, are posted on the FAQ section on the event webpage, um, and then anything um, that we'll be answering today we'll probably throw on there as well. So I'll open it up. If you have any questions, um, feel free to type them into the chat or um, raise your hand and we'll call on you to answer them. We have a raised hand from Karthik. All right, go ahead. Hi. Um, so will we be getting this presentation um, sent to us? Yep, so it, it's um, being recorded and it will be posted on the Wildlife Safari event web page. Um, so you can go back and view it anytime. Uh, uh, how about the links? Um, I mean, the recording is fine. But uh, there were some links uh, that were in this presentation. So we yeah, yep. This the slide the slide deck will also be posted up there, so it'll be easier to reference the links too. Thank you. Yep. Good question. And next we have Francie. All right, go ahead, Francie. Okay, got it. Okay, I have 
three really quick questions. Mm -hmm. In the past, my students have been able to have tabs on the book. Is that still okay? Yep, tabs are fine. Yep, as long as nothing is loose and coming out, um, that is okay. Yep, definitely flagging them with little, yeah, I've seen either students using sticky notes or the little tabs. Um, I find those pretty helpful too, so whatever works best for students. Okay, then my second question is, last year you had food webs with the mammals. Are you, and I heard you mention the role in a food chain. Are they going to have to practice reading food webs? Um, I would say yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then my last one is the audio clips that are provided. Are these the same ones you're going to use for the competition or are you going to have different ones? Nope, those are the ones that we are pulling awesome. from. So I believe that there are 17 yep. total. Yep. Um, so a portion of those will be included um, in both the uh, district practice tests and the regional main tournament. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And a question from Mary. Hey, go ahead, Mary. I was just wondering, are students is limited to what they're allowed to write in their own field guides that they create? They are not. Um, so you you may they may use information, um, glue in pictures, glue in information from other sources, other field guides, um, the Stan Tequila field guide. Um, really what the student created field guide allows them to do is organize in a way that works best for them. Um, while the Santa Tequila field guide is organized nicely and set up like a typical field guide with a bit more focus on um, stu being student friendly or child friendly, um, we recognize that you know everybody learns differently and everybody organizes information differently. So um, the student created field guide gives them that opportunity um, to put things into their into their own words or what information makes best sense for them to utilize for the competition. A uh, question from Molly. Uh, hi, I was wondering um, in uh, duos of kids, are they able to use a one binder and um, one field guide? Yep, they can. So it can be any combination. So those teams that have the those full teams with the two students, um, they can either be two San Tequila field guides, it can be two student created field guides, and it could be one of each, um, whichever, again, whichever works best for your students. Okay, cool. And then um, when you say a regular size binder, you mean like uh, no bigger than like a one inch binder? Um, I, yes, I'm not going to limit it. It can be a two inch binder, so it can be thicker. Um, but the kind of standard size binder, I don't have a binder next to me here, but I have a notebook. Um, I believe it's like an 11 inch, you know, like the typical 11 inch size. Um, I've had some kids that had binders that are really long and open up much in a much broader space. Um, so those are the ones I found kind of encroach a little bit on the neighboring team's um, space when we're in rooms that are fairly tight, um, just based on the number of um, stations that we have to have and number of students. Sometimes we are able to space out students um, every other station um, for a test session. Sometimes we have every single station full. Um, so just kind of limit to that standard size binder. Yep. Okay, perfect. Last question. Um, I know that last year we had some issues with kids that were kind of peeking over those dividers. Mm -hmm. um, what I told my kids, I'm like, you see anybody trying to look at your stuff, you you raise your hand and you call it out. Absolutely. But with the, my only question is with the time crunch of only having 60 seconds at each station, I know that with my kids last year, it stressed them out that they were having to kind of play defense while, mm -hmm. <laughs> while um, you know, trying to answer their questions. Is uh, what would be a good uh, kind of 
tip for them um, if they're in that situation, just so it doesn't cut into their time. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, so we, I have a note to include an extra volunteer. Um, we typically have um, around three volunteers in our room. Um, so myself and then someone timing and then another, another person or two that walks around the room um, continuously. Um, to monitor for exactly that um, and to make sure that voices are kept down a little bit. Um, definitely, um, I will again mention to students in the beginning where they get a little bit of instructions um, prior to us starting the test um, to mention, to you know, raise their hand and mention to us if they notice that. Um, and they need to tell us, tell us right away. Um, there's not a whole lot I can do if they tell me at the very end as they're exiting the room and I don't know who has been next to them to note. Um, so definitely to let us know right off the bat so that we can have someone um, kind of following along with them to make sure that it is that it is not happening throughout the test. OK, perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I have a question from Jamie. Hello, I'm sorry if I missed it, uh, but how well should our kiddos know the population status classifications and will they be focused more on the Michigan stats? Um, I would say yes, I would focus a little bit more on the Michigan stats, um, but again, if it's listed, listed on those um, species pages, definitely something that um, they can pick up on easily. So as they're, if it's, you know, a question and they are looking through, they know exactly where to look to be able to find that information, if that makes sense. Yes, thank you. And a question from Mary. So I have one more question. We were told that our alternates would be participating in the March competition. So how does that work when there's three students on a team? Are they allowed to bring like a field guide per person or is it still just two? How does it change their dynamic? Um, I will have to get back with you on that. I know that last year at at least one of the practice competitions that alternates were allowed and a third student was able to participate along with the team. Um, but for the May competition, that isn't allowed. Um, so the third person at the practice competitions um, would be allowed to have their own field guide, um, but I will get back. We will have some information sent out on that. I know that that was a question that was brought up um, last year following the practice, uh, practice events. Um, so look out for some more information on that. Okay, thank you. Yep. A uh, question in the chat uh, from Christine. Does each student get their own answer sheet or are they working together to come up with an answer they both agree on? Uh, good question. So each team has their own zip grade form. So as teams enter the room, um, the zip grade forms are already filled out by the team number um, based on your school. Um, whether and whether you have um, uh, the first team and the secondary team each have their own zip grade form. So each team, whether that be one or the two students, has their own form. So they do need to know how to work together um, to fill out uh, their answers on their zip grade form. Uh, another question in the chat from uh, Van Thome. Uh, can you post these dates uh, for the nature chat? Uh, sorry, uh, for the nature center sessions while uh, you are answering questions, so we can screenshot it. Um, let's see here. I can pull that back up for you all really quick. Um, so again, this information is on um, the event web page um, and. I believe it's in a document that lists all of the different workshops. So there's a couple other events besides Wildlife Safari that um, some other organizations provide workshops for, um, such as the Arthropod um, event. Um, and you'll just need to navigate on that 
PDF to the workshop pages. There's more information there um, through uh, the website. Um, and then um, these uh, different sites can be contacted for more in specific information as to what the um, program entails. Uh, another question from Maddie. Uh, we have an older field guidebook by James H. Harding. Do you suggest getting the tequila one instead? I would definitely suggest that. I don't have that one, and that's not what I'm basing the test on. Um, so it might have similar information, and again, might be a good resource to use to help with identification photos and practice, um, but the information is based on the information that's in the Stand Tequila field guide. See, I'm checking through the questions here. Um, Sherry mentioned, will the call questions be multiple choices too? So the frog and toad call vocalizations. Um, some will be multiple choice. Um, we may have some that are right in as well. So I would suggest having students practice both ways. So practicing with options in front of them as well as um, writing it down. Um, and in the case that they are right in answers, they would just need to be legible. Um, spelling would not count, um, but it needs to be legible enough and close enough um, that it can be um, noted as the right, correct answer. Hey, and I think that's all the questions that I see in the chat there. Again, if you have any other questions that come up, make sure to check those frequently asked questions um, first. And then um, there is a question form that you can submit um, and they typically get answered um, within a couple of days of submitting that question to us. So again, thank you all for attending. Good luck to all of you and your teams. Um, and we'll see you all at practice tournaments and in May.